Welcome back to Moto America's continuing series, 21 and 21, where we look at the 21 Superbike champions since the beginning of the class all the way back in 1976. And I'm so happy to have a good friend of mine, number 18 on the list, Josh Hayes. Hi, Josh. How are you? Good. How you doing, Greg? Good, man. So um, let's get right into this thing, Josh. Let's talk about your career and how you ended up finally getting the superbike ride that you always dreamed about. <laughs> yeah, it was a bit of a long road, you know. I did a decade, a decade in the in the support classes, won three championships, got passed over a few times. Um, uh, it's funny, you know, my career played out a really weird but funny way. A lot of being in the right place at the right time, a lot of luck. I, I can't remember in my career ever having an option between multiple teams like playing playing off oh i can do this or i can do this and being able to weigh them out on each other i just got lucky each year and, and one one ride kind of led into the next you know if i did do multiple years with a team and uh finally keith mccarty gave me a call i was in uh i think i was in portugal racing world super sport desperate to find something when i got the call from keith and uh, I don't even think there was a question of money. It was like, hey, I got a Yamaha Superbike ride. I said, I'll take it. And it was done. So um, <laughs> glad that came around. <laughs> what were the motorcycles like when you started riding a Superbike? Were they as sophisticated electronically as they are now? Or, you know, how did that all play out? Um, the electronics were there. They were sophisticated. Absolutely. Um, but the system that they were using was a little bit different. Everything was more reactionary than it, than it currently is. Now they've gone to, to software that's more of a torque based system where everything is so integrated. You know, back then we could actually just turn TC off and not have any. And now it's not that simple the way the bike works. You know, everything's a calculation. So it looks at the gear uh rpm lean angle all of these different things and says okay he's asking for this much throttle and decides how much you're allowed to have so it is quite a bit different than the stuff i originally started with though it was advanced electronics the bikes were very powerful and on the chassis side we were a little bit more on the stock uh area but we everything was massaged greatly to make that happen so let's talk about i mean the amount of wins that you've had in your superbike career, astonishing. Uh, can you pick out a race or two, or maybe even a competitor that really uh, sticks out in your mind when you think back to your years on the superbike? Man, I'm sorry, dude. Can That's you okay. hold on a second? Yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> he came crashing through the door. I got to pee. <laughs> sorry. All right, go ahead, buddy. You're going to poop too? Yeah. Oh, this could be a minute. <laughs> well, Josh, in AMA racing, you have seven total titles, four Superbike. Let's talk just Superbike in terms of memories. Who is it or what race stands out in your mind when people ask you, what was your biggest rival or biggest race of your career? You know, I had a couple of uh, pretty awesome, you know, things that I remember over my championship seasons. Um, I had rivalries with quite a few guys. You know, Tommy Hayden was there for a lot of my career. Roger Hayden was there for a little bit even longer in my career. But it seemed like I went head to head with with Tommy more than most. Um, and then Blake Young, of course, I had those years. Um, I would say my first championship um, was pretty, pretty close. It came down to Tommy and I, the last race of the year. I want to say uh, the next year it was Blake, but uh, I remember New Jersey being just a crazy race. It was red flagged with only six or eight laps to go. Um, I had gotten myself back into the championship the day before uh, Blake kind of had a lead coming in and then it, he kind of, I, he choked a little on Saturday and on Sunday I was, I was away with a lead. Everything was good. They red flagged it, started it over. I had to finish third or better. And when I started the last lap, when we got the white flag, I was in P seven, if I remember correctly. And just like, like this whole litany of things happened. I ended up getting second right close to Blake Young. So, uh, 
I wrapped up that championship a little early, I think in Homestead, but then the last race of the year was in New Orleans. It's the only time we ever raced in New Orleans. All of my family and friends were there from uh, back in Gulfport. So having a, a really dominant weekend in front of all of them was, was pretty awesome. And all of 2012 was pretty special, I think. Well, and the final question is, <laughs> which to some people may be pretty obvious, but where do we find you these days, Josh? Are you in retirement? Like, what is going on with you now? No. You know, I'm still, uh, still at the track. I'm coaching on a list, and my wife is crew chief and still working at the track. And then uh, other than that, this year has been pretty special. We got a little help from Heartland RV. We, have, uh, we left home in May uh, with a two-week-old baby girl. Uh, Hawk and Huckleberry in the passenger seat with Melissa between two car seats in the back seat of our pickup, driving around the trailer, seeing the country and uh, following the Moto America schedule. So it's been quite the adventure and uh, I feel lucky and privileged that I get to still do this. Cool. Well, Josh, thanks for the years of amazing entertainment and, you know, congratulations on your four championships and all the race wins you have in the bag. It was a fantastic career. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that.